Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the Olive Drift channel. Happy New Year, uh, hopefully this year's a bit better. Uh, I've been doing some things over the holidays, Christmas break, um, the RX-7, so last video I got it tuned, but I had a few leaks. I had used uh, a couple of second hand fittings on my oil relocator up in there. So one of those was like dripping oil and I'd also forgotten to tighten one of the bungs for the um, or if you want to put an extra oil gauge or something in there it's got a couple of bungs and I'd actually forgotten to tighten one so that was like dripping fairly aggressively let's say also the diff seal on this side I must have tore it when I was putting the two-way in so when I got off the dyno there was like diff oil everywhere um, so I've replaced both side seals in the diff and also the there was like a cable tie on this um, CV joint so I put the proper metal band on it because it was like flinging out a little bit of grease. I re-greased it and put the new band on there. So that's all sweet now. Oh, what else did I do? Also, I uh, fiberglass wrapped my exhaust under the all the way up to the turbo up there. It's fiberglassy just to keep some of the heat in there and try and keep it down in the engine bay. Um, what else leaked? The power steering, because I rushed my power steering reservoir. I did it all fairly quickly and I uh, had a couple of pinhole leaks around the, the supply fitting. So I had to drain that and go over that with a TIG. But now I've run it a few times on the dyno, on, on the dyno, on the hoist. And it doesn't seem to dribble anything, so that's pretty good. This is all buttoned up. Um, so hopefully, over the next month, I'm going to do the outside. Got to sand some panels and for the wrap. Wrap the outside of it. So, we'll do that. But at the moment, I am... I'm going to change the, the power steering rack in the MX-5 because I changed it out for a depowered power steering rack which is too heavy, I don't like it. So, um, basically when the car's at like 80% lock and I wanna push that a bit extra, it's like super heavy. And uh, if I've only just got one hand on there cause the other hand's busy with gear change or something, it, um, it really stuffs up my line. So I've decided that's not really acceptable. This is gonna be my comp car. So if I'm chasing someone close, I don't wanna have to drive around heavy steering. It's just not working out. So I've got to change the power steering pump and the rack. So I think this power steering pump's a bit dodgy. So chuck the old rack back in and put this one for sale on the MX-5 forum page or something. Because the circuit boys like to run depowered racks. It saves them a bit of weight. Uh, hopefully they can sell. So yeah, that's what I'm doing today. Stay tuned. Unbolt some things and tear that apart. And uh, yeah. I'm hoping to drive the RX-7, this thing, probably at Summer Matsuri, so test it. So we'll see what explodes and what doesn't explode. But it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with the power number I made, 310 kilowatts. And a whole lot of torque in between two and a half, three and a half thousand RPM. So it should be a bucket load of fun. Let's do something to this thing. Alrighty. <clears throat> got that out. So I've got to take the Rod ends out and swap them onto this dirty, messy piece of junk, which has got all the hard lines and stuff still on it. So I thought I'd change that over. And then I 
can put it back in because it's easier to put it back in when or it's actually harder to screw the the tie rods in when the rack's out of the car or whatever you know what i mean so i'm gonna do that now i'm just gonna chuck this one in the vise and undo those Alrighty, so i've changed over the the tie rods onto the power steering rack but i haven't i haven't tightened them up yet and now i'll tighten them up once i bolt it into the car because uh once it's bolted down you can it holds it so you can do them up tight um cheers it's pretty simple to put back in i've just left my old lines the lines are actually still in the car because i wasn't sure whether i was going to like it or not so i just left all the lines there just cable tied some garbage bags around them to stop any crud from getting in there and a rag um but yeah it's just four bolts onto the subframe down there and uh stick them back in the knuckles oh and don't forget the steering shaft up there so go put that in it's one 12 mil bolt which just goes through but yeah stay tuned So she's in. I just thought I'd give you guys or you budding MX-5 drifters uh, a look at my lock kit so you can see what I've done. So I've added 35 millimeters to the lower control arm. I think it's like 32. It's not quite 35. But um, chopped the knuckles, obviously, underneath, and then I also mod the the tie rod end so angle it back. And that what that does is that makes sure the angle in between the actual rod shaft and the the piston in your rack is reduced here at this pivot point so obviously it makes it you know more so that when the when the actual steering arm on the knuckle comes in line with the tie rod when it pulls all the way it um it won't bind well it can never bind actually um, what else have I done? Oh, I got the, the GK Tech, what are they, the, the 15 mil, um, screw on adapters, so the tie rod actually, <coughs> I'll put it back, so the tie rod's actually just a, the standard tie rod end, screwed into the GK Tech extender thingy, just a straight one, not the offset one, and then I, I actually cut and welded on the IKEA Formula S13 Sylvia tie rods because they're a lot fatter and stronger because I was bending them every time I come off the bank. So yeah, so that's basically that. Oh, and also, I don't know if you can see here at the bottom of this, so this ball joint here. See, I've got a spacer on this side. So I actually cut that, that section of the ball joint off through there on this side and then space the whole ball joint forwards to give me more caster, which worked really well and yeah i got 10 degrees of camber by extending the lower control arm i think it's got seven seven degrees of caster so with all that camber and all the caster that makes the steering quite heavy so that's why the, the non-power rack was not working that great it was just too much load if you were just drifting like a mx5 with maybe some rack spaces uh, a depowered rack probably works sweet but if you go to this aggressive setup, it uh, start to feel pretty heavy. Still can use it, but uh, I just found that I didn't want to have that rare chance where the extra load would catch me out in a tricky situation. Anyway, so that's that. Let's go connect the lines up at the top now. There we go. 
been campaigning this car for seven years now. In drift competition, just club level stuff. And it's pretty sweet. 200 and 220 kilowatts. She's pretty reliable. I think this power seeing pumps on the way out. I was throwing belts, but that could have just been because I didn't have it tight enough. Anyway. Anyway, I'll throw a belt on there and uh, yeah, that's it for that one. my old power steering pump but it turns out it's wrecked I forgot that it's actually stuck so I'll have to order another one anyway um, we'll wrap it up for this video thanks for watching and I'll see you again on the next one uh, hopefully get some parts together for the MX-5 and get that completely running fine and um, then I'm gonna start working on wrapping the FD I've got to sand the panels with 1500 grit sandpaper and then Get the wrap, start finishing off the outside so it looks good. Now I can order some wheels and make it look nice. Anyway, thanks for watching. Check out ilovedrift.com.au and get yourself some merch because it's cool and we love drift. I'm sure you do too. But yeah, see you next time. Bye.